Hi, it's Dean here today, and now I've finally got the rest of my Con Air Raptor Squadron. These are iGear's version of the Seekers. Previously, uh, I did a video review for the Coneheads, so they came in a three-pack. The Seekers come individually boxed, so here's the iGear's version of Thundercracker, here's iGear's version of Skywarp, and I have Starscream up there as well, but I'm not going to bring his box down. Um, that means I've got all six now, so they're pretty cool. Let's get them open and have a look. Just like with the Coneheads, these guys come packaged in jet mode. And I've got to say, I'm more impressed with the jet modes of the Seekers than the Coneheads. Um, just because they seem to stick together, like they're more cohesive. The Coneheads had a few issues with how strong their tab in, but you can see... This guy is pretty robust, so the way that it all pegs together and the strength of the tabs, it just it holds the plane together in a much more satisfying way. So although I like the design of the cone heads better than these seekers, the execution is just better all round for these three. In the box, there are a few accessories. So the first one, uh, two null rays, although I'm not sure what I gear are calling these, but they're pretty clearly Stark Scream's Null Rays. I like the way that's done up. It looks really good. Um, nice use of paint there. And the overall shape, although not exactly the same as uh, a G1 Null Ray, it's a nice update that matches the update of the rest of the figure. We also get a couple of these, looks like, air-to-air uh, -air missiles, which are a bit bland, not really painted there. Um... Later on in the review, I'm going to see if the port is compatible with the Wings of Uranus kit, because they look somewhat like this. I'm guessing it will be, because this seems to be a 5mm peg, so there's two of these anyway. And we get a Starscream face. So his face is the smirking face. Now, I think this is the face that got a lot of those initial complaints, and I think people didn't like it so much which was why it was replaced with an alternate head which is on this figure right now but um, the sad part for me is that although I don't care about this face I do like the one that ships with better what I would have liked to have seen is this face um, on the line art on the back of the box it shows this kind of uh, faceplate version of Starscream where he looks more like a totally different character and I would have liked the option to showing to have been able to show Starscream with that face on, but because they had to replace um, this smirking face with a new vanilla kind of face, we missed out on this. For size comparison, here is iGear's version of Starscream with, I think this is an original classic Starscream. I've got so many of this mold. Um, I do have the more G1 paint scheme version of this, but it's still on the card, so for now this will have to do. You can see that this new Igi one is really a lot bigger than Classics. On the underside, the jet has some nice working landing gear, so it's really quite smooth in the way that it functions. It locks into that position and travels nice and easily there. They really, really roll. This also rolls at the front, and that can just bend down, and also friction will hold that in like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, this transformation joint here does protrude a little bit, but uh, it's not too egregious when you take a look at the figure as a whole. I do like the plastic that they've used. It feels a little bit better than the plastic that was on the cone heads. I don't know how to put it. It just has a little bit more smoothness and hardness to it. The cone heads did feel overly... Um, the, maybe maybe it's the hardness is just the best way to say it. They, they felt less hard than this, so uh, it feels a little bit nicer in the hand. Unfortunately, that quality of plastic doesn't carry through all the figures, and I'm starting to think that it's got something to do with um, the way that they color the plastic, or maybe they have to choose a certain grade of plastic to be able to get the color into it, and that's because this blue one, uh, Thundercracker, he doesn't feel as nice as Starscream. So um, I also had that problem with my, you know, dirge felt a little bit wrong and 
The color doesn't seem to be exactly right on this Thundercracker. I think that it's too pale, and um, that's it's not painted. That's just the plastic color, and it's just uh, you know it's a little bit disappointing that they couldn't get his color to be exactly as I want it. Now the the color on Classics Thundercracker that is much deeper and. Uh, I also have the Masterpiece version of Thundercracker, that's much deeper, and this is pretty far from that. Just for comparison, here is Masterpiece Thundercracker. This is the new mold, new Starscream mold, and, you know, it's it's kind of a shade darker, and it's hard to tell. Do iGear deliberately make things a little bit off so they can do a recolor later, or is it just the kind of slightly shitty plastic that they use forcing them to do that? I can't say, but I know how I prefer it to look. The Skywarp falls somewhere between the two for plastic quality. Um, Starscream being the best, Thundercracker being kind of the worst. And, you know, the more you progress along the line towards this slightly softer plastic, the more you get this happening. So I'm going to squeeze this here. Wait a minute, let's try to get this tabbed in. You see, you get kind of warping. So... Starscream, who is noticeably harder, has much less of the warping happening. You see nice straight lines there. But then these other two are more out of whack. And if you try to squeeze it in on one end, it ends up popping out on the other. And it's, I think as the parts have come out of the mold, um, when they cool or shrink or whatever happens to this plastic, it's slightly deformed. The purples in the plastic and paint that they've used on Skywarp are pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. The black is almost black. So it's it's dark enough for me to be happy with it, but it's just a little bit um, less than perfectly black, which may be because of the matte finish. There's a very slight matte sheen on these figures, or it may be just that the plastic isn't quite there. Either way, the Masterpiece... Skywarp that I've got is more black than that, which is just again another little um, nitpick I have with the coloring of iGear's product. As a trio, they are definitely attractive. I like the fact that you can stand them all up on their ends like this. So if you look down there, they are standing up on their own. You can just pop out the robot mode feet, and if you want to save space on your shelf, you can sit them all up like that. I seem to remember in the cartoon sometimes them being animated taking off that way. So that's pretty nice. Turn them all around. There's their undersides. Down to the transformation. So pop these up. Get that all moving there. Let's pop these tabs out over here. You can fold these wings back in on themselves like that. Be cautious here not to untab that because it's only held in by two little friction nubs. Rotate these wings down. That lets you push this little bit out of the way. Do the same on the other side. That goes out of the way. Um, next, we want to untab these sections here, turn them the whole way around. We can now split the legs, extend them out into their robot mode length, and tab in this panel at the back. Bring up the heels. Pop out the toes. Untab the chest plate, just bringing that down like that. Um, want to lift up the nose cone a little bit so you've got some clearance in here. Uh, this can be a little bit hard to get them both right through, but both of those arms have to go around like this. And because the plastic is a little bit bendy, it does give you some room to play with when it comes to forcing that through. So the parts will give just a bit, you just got to push it in. Collapse down this forearm panel to make his forearms a little fatter. Um, next, what we want to do is at the back, there's this little panel, and you just got to bend that down like that to get it out of the way. Grab this nose cone section, flip his head up, and this whole bit is going to slide down into that groove that we made. So you can see that fills up the groove. You can then, oh, wait a minute, first you want to get that going back up, slide it down, and then tab the chest back in. But don't be too forceful because the little tabs in here can be wrecked. They're the biggest problem with the figure, so you've got to kind of carefully tab those in. 
slide this tail fin up and then lock it back in like this so that they form one chunk that gets it out of the way of standing. Then just pose the arms how you want them. So put the shoulder panels up, rotate all these bits so that they're facing in the right direction, and that's pretty much it. Now, at this stage, you can choose to spread these wings open if you want. They've gone for, I think, what's an IDW look. Uh, I don't really like it like that. It's nice that they went to the trouble of putting it in, but I think I just prefer to keep the wings in one piece. Then, if you've got his guns, they can peg in to this kind of uh, independently rotating gun holding bit here. Let's do the other side. It's a very tight fit. So because this is so thin here, you want to avoid grabbing it by that section. And that's it, Starscream. On camera, the face can become very difficult to see. And that's because there's a really high contrast between the almost white plastic of Starscream's body and the dark grey of the face. In person, the face is much easier to see, so it's not that great. It's just that it kind of blows out the sensor on cameras. Um, right now, I've got kind of lights shining right into it, so that's why those eyes are popping so much. They're a kind of um, pearlescent paint over the top of them. The face does have this curve in it, so that also plays a bit of havoc with photography. So all in all, he's not really that photogenic, but in hand, he's really fun to have. So, I mean, I know that that face is still not showing up very well here. Um, this is the new, more serious face that they developed to try and make it not so much like animated. It's pretty good. And I, t I tend to think they should have just dumped the whole animated face that they put in there all together in favor of that uh, masked face that I showed on the back of the box art. But we do get both. So, I mean, you can see all you have to do is pop off the front and you can stick this smirking one on. Now, all of these jets do come with this same face, but they all have another version, the more animated version that you can choose to put on if you want to. All three of the faces are interchangeable so it doesn't really matter who you choose to put it with and um, they all fit on the same basic head and none of them look that great to be honest uh, I wouldn't choose to use any of these I think so they're a little bit of a waste for me at least here's Thundercracker in his robot mode so again that problem of too much flare happening on the face the light always gets sort of caught in that arc but you know in person, not as bad as on camera. You can catch it at a good angle like that where it's not going to reflect back so much. Um, very poseable, very nice to look at. If I grab that Thundercracker again from Masterpiece and put it next to him, you can see the kind of size difference happening there. So although this guy probably does really scale better to the new Masterpiece cars, it looks better to have these jets next to them. Like here is Lambor, or Ko Lambor. He looks suitably sized next to Thundercracker. And a Classics Mold Seeker next to one of our new Mold Seekers. This is a real Skywarp from the Skywarp Ultra Magnus 2-pack. So I've had him for ages. I think I've got another uh, one of these mint in sealed box somewhere. Uh, for a long time, I used to think this was a pretty cool toy, but happy to replace it now. It's just getting a little bit too small for a Seeker, in my opinion. Here's a comparison of the blueness of plastic between um, Conehead Dirge and Seeker Thundercracker. You can see that, um, you know, Dirge's plastic, even though it's not ideal for Thundercracker, it would have been more suitable for Thundercracker than the plastic they've ended up going with. This is really more of a, a baby blue, which isn't what I expected. Um, Dirge is pretty close to how his colors should be based on the toy, and Thundercracker is just not, so it is a little bit disappointing. My final thoughts, I'm still glad that I've bought all six. Um, I know I said it in the Conehead review that I thought if I didn't get them all in one hit, I probably wouldn't have bought them 
altogether, just maybe would have ended up with one or two, that still holds true. And that's because they're not all perfect. Um, build quality wise, I think Starscream is the best build quality out of all six that I've got. He's pretty solid. Most of his things peg in, uh, holds together well. Tolerances are nice and straight. The rest, they've all got problems here and there. Um, they do look nice together. A bit hard to photograph, but on the shelf, they line up really well. You can get, it looks like such a powerful team. They're very big figures. Like uh, you saw in comparison to Masterpiece, they were almost up there with Masterpiece Seekers in height. Uh, they, they definitely look formidable on the shelf. And the jet modes are pretty nice. So if you do want to pose, and I, I forgot to mention, it does come with the flight stand. All of these still have the flight stand. You could just line these up in jet mode on your shelf and have some six nice looking jets to go against your uh, TFC aerial bots, for example. It really surprises me, actually, that we ended up getting these iGear Seekers because with the release of TFC's Air Raid, um, I really thought that this would get repurposed into a G1 style Seeker. Um, that's not the case. It doesn't seem to have happened. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out with these because they are a bit bigger. Um, so all in all, I can recommend people picking up all of them if you do like the Seekers. If you just like to get one for the mold sake, then probably stick with Starscream. That's my video review for the Seeker half of the equation. I'm Odean. Thank you for watching.